so the hardest tune that I, I, I learned recently, there, there are, I've got a few things that I'm working on that I can't do. I can't play the slide guitar like Kokomo Arnold. I just can't do it yet. Now, on the surface, if you were to listen to him, you'd probably think, I'm sure, I'm sure you'd be able to do that, you know? And that's what, that's what I did when I listened to it. I was like, I'm sure I'm going to be able to do this. And then I tried to do it, and I can't get it. I can't quite get what he's doing. Um, so I'm working on it, and I, I put quite a bit of work in over the past few weeks, and I'm starting to get it. But, I, and I'm really, what I mean is I could play the songs in some kind of way, but I'm trying to get what he's doing, you know? I'm being particular about it. Like, there's idiosyncrasies going on there. And if you overlook those, then it's a waste of time, you know? It's, it's, it just cheapens the whole picture. I'm not interested in cheapening great pieces, you know? I wanna, like, get as close to those guys as I can, and then hopefully, through that process, I assimilate some of what's good about what they're doing. I'm not trying to be them. I'm trying to assimilate the best bits of what they're doing on a technical level. Um, and then recently I was really, in the last year or so, I became obsessed with ragtime on the guitar, you know? Um, there were some great transcriptions by Lasse Johansson, who is um, a really great player. He's very measured, very, very measured. He's a very really different guitar player to me as a personality, I think. But a very measured player, very um, technically controlled, and calm. And which is perfect for ragtime because there's a lot going on and I think you need to calm it down and have that level of technical prowess and control. So that was really nice to learn some stuff from him. Um, I was about to go and see or do a workshop with uh, the great John James, who's one of the great British living exponents of ragtime guitar. He was going to be playing this weekend um, in Edinburgh. It's been cancelled. He's quite old now um and i i hope they get to reschedule it i i i you know i'm really gutted about not getting to see him mm -hmm. um but the pieces that i've been learning recently i did a, a medley of um florida blues into creole bells and it was two separate arrangements that i'd learned from different sources and i put them together just because they fitted quite nicely um Creole Bells is a lovely melody. There's quite a lot of versions of it out there. But this particular arrangement, I think it was one of uh, Johansson's arrangements, just, I just got hooked on it. And you have to, to, to play these pieces, it takes so many hours of practice that you've got to really be in love with the melody. Because if you don't love the melody, you're not going to be able to practice it for the amount of time it takes. I mean, I've been playing it for months, months and months and months. And if I don't keep playing it, I lose it, you know, because you've got to keep the tightness. So um, I, it's a thing that I've, I've got it now, I can play it, and I have to just keep the tightness there and just keep playing it every, every day, just have a little run through that tune and make sure it's there. Mm. Um, wonderful music. A, a recording of that one? Of yourself? Yeah, I think, I, I think there is a recording out there. I did a, I did a kitchen session with a, a film... Film, uh, filmographer <laughs> called Tommy Slack. Uh, he recorded me in my kitchen. Um, I'll send you the link to that. You can, you can share it. <laughs> okay, so you've been working on Creole Bells. Um, anything yeah. else that's kicked your ass lately? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this whole, I mean, this whole situation, <laughs> yeah, musically speaking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll, I might I might have to uh, have myself a little pickle here. <laughs> so pickle break, have a thing. I think, I, I, think I, I think I might have got myself in a little pickle a few times recently. Yeah, <laughs> these are good for you. You got to keep up your immune system, you know. I love pickles. I'm I'm on board with that. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Kokomo. Um, Sam Collins, I'm working on Sam Collins, along with the Kokomo stuff. Sam Collins, yeah, he's an early, old-time guy. Um, he's got a great high falsetto voice. He sings blues and gospel. Plays a wonderful slide guitar. He's got, like, he's got a handful of approaches to the guitar that he uses and kind of, you know, he, re he repeats himself. Like, he has a few styles that he uses, but those styles are good styles. 
So I'm trying to crack him too. I don't think he's quite as technically demanding as Kokomo. Kokomo Arnold is, and I just realized this, I can't believe that I didn't realize this before, but like, as someone who is such a fan of Robert Johnson, I mean, I, I gave Robert Johnson all the props, all the kudos. This guy's a genius. Nobody could stand up to him. But Robert Johnson stole most of his shit from Kokomo. Kokomo Arnold is someone that if you don't know about, you really got to get into him and have a good listen. And what I recommend doing is listening to Robert Johnson and then listening to Kokomo Arnold and realizing that, you know, Robert Johnson came many years after Kokomo Arnold. Mm -hmm. And just bear that in mind when you listen and think, oh, my God, he ripped off all this stuff. I mean, he does a great job with it. But I mean, the rhythmic ideas, the approaches, the lyrics, the, the whole songs, you know, he's taken things wholesale from this guy. People always mention Sun House in relation to Robert Johnson. I don't get that. I don't see much Sun House in Robert Johnson. I don't, really don't see much at all. Um, Sun House is wonderful and powerful, but he's not a sophisticated player like Robert Johnson was. Mm -hmm. Kokomo Arnold is a seriously technically sophisticated player. So that's what I've been digging recently the most. Um, Sam Collins, not as technical, but there's, there's just some spirit there, some magical spirit. I'm learning a tune called Devil in the Lion's Den. <laughs> Promising. Brilliant.